So it's my pleasure to uh, to present to the to the quarterly uh, workshop. So why did we engage into uh, Dinar Julia? So uh, uh, Dinar is now a 20, 29 year old uh, project, and after such a time he needed uh, rewriting. And rather than rewrite it in MATLAB, which would have been just doing better wh what we did uh, already, it was more interesting to switch to uh, a newer language, more efficient, uh, and that would be a fully open source by opposition to MATLAB, that is a proprietary software. So what we would like to achieve in uh, rewriting Dynar is to get better and clearer code, more modularized, certainly one, uh, one of the drawbacks of Dynar MATLAB was that it was open source in name, but it was uh, a little bit difficult to uh, uh, to jump uh, into, uh, into the code. And uh, the fact we had very long uh, function and so, so on, so it, and not a lot of modularization, it was difficult to reuse the code for uh, anything else. Uh, it is also important to us to get faster code. And that we're planning to, uh, to go at it both ways. First, by using maybe improved algorithm with respect to one we, uh, we implemented 10, 20 years ago, and that uh, check better the, the, act, the implementation of the algorithm that we uh, do use. And Julia offer more options for optimizing code than MATLAB does. Uh, that's for the speed. In part, improvement in the speed will also increase our ability to handle larger models. Larger models uh, are made necessary uh, for multi-country models. The biggest models that we know about are multi-country ones. Climate economic models are, are also usually much larger than uh, the, uh, the model we were working 15 years ago. Uh, heterogeneous agent model is another type of, uh, of uh, modeling that ha has increasing computing need. Uh, by modul modularization and uh, clarity of code, we hope to increase the openness of the, of the system of, of Dynar by making it easier to add new algorithms, even by people who are not part of the core development team of Dynar, and easier to access the algorithms outside of the Dynar language that we want to have more it was we it was in our mind at the beginning of the of the dynam matlab project but we were never very successful to um, to let people use dynar as the library that they could use from their own uh, uh, programs, partly because the API of the to, towards the various uh, function that makes Dynar were never uh, very explicitly uh, defined. And finally, um, uh, we hope to spare some cost. Uh, to our user to the extent as uh, Julia is free and open source. And if you're working in an institution 
that is, is getting sick worried not to have to pay a maintenance, you can, uh, you can get a maintenance, a maintenance contract for Julia directly from the Julia organization. So, uh, so Dinar Julia is, will be deeply different from uh, Dinar MATLAB, at least under the hood. But uh, we want to make the transition as easy as possible. And probably one of the best assets of the Dynar experience is the definition of the Dynar modeling language that you use when, uh, when you write the mode file. So to the largest extent possible, we want that Dynar Julia is able to keep running existing mode files that had been written for Dynar MATLAB. Uh, it's possible, even to some extent, easy for the most part. Of course, for those of you who mix MATLAB code and Dynar code in the same uh, mode file, the, uh, the MATLAB code of your mode file will need to be changed to uh, Julia code. Uh, in order to facilitate, to, to, to ensure the, uh, the compatibility with existing mode files, we decided to reuse the Dynar C++ preprocessor that uh, early on was outputting MATLAB M file to be treated by the Dynar MATLAB uh, computational toolbox and simply change that instead the C++ pre preprocessor when called from Julia spits out Julia code. Okay, so largely the mode file should be uh, as easy to use as before uh, by people with experience with Dynar MATLAB. Uh, the model, the, uh, we want also to impose a clearer distinction in the code, but between what deals with interpreting and representing the problem out of the Dynar language and the mode file and the actual numerical algorithm. And one way of, uh, of doing it is to, is to write different Julia packages for numerical algorithm and one, the Dynar JL, which deals only with the interpretation of the mode file. Uh, so the Dynar Julia is made of several uh, Julia packages. Um, otherwise, in the list of uh, wishful hope, try to use a, a more homogeneous coding style in the di di different packages. And because Julia, uh, the Ju Julia ecosystem provides many uh, existing uh, packages. I think now uh, they are close to 9,000 packages. We can find several things that uh, we, don't, we don't need to rewrite. I think in particular, NLSOL for nonlinear solver, even if it needs some improvement, plots for plotting, pretty tables to, to shaping the tables, and so on and so forth. The entire, uh, since the start, the effort of uh, rewriting Dynar Jul Julia is public, and you, you find uh, the current state of the work uh, at the link here that if you get the slide, you can even click on directly. So why did we choose Julia? I, I consider once of its main interest is that it's a, a language that has been conceived from the start for scientific computing and solving intricate numerical problems. 
He, he doesn't have, the, even if he could, he doesn't have such uh, a general program, uh, general programming language ambition, such as Python, for example. In fact, Python is the reverse. It's, it has been first a procedural language, then uh, with NumPy and, uh, and similar, it got added uh, ability for numerical computing. But it's not the same thing as to have uh, efficient numerical computing from the uh, on, uh, on start. It is an interpreter. To the means that when you open Julia, you can ask one plus one, it will, it will answer you too, um, and do all kinds of compilations that way. But it gains, to the, to the cost of some delay at the beginning, it, uh, it gains the speed of a compiled language by uh, what is called uh, just-in-time compiling, where the uh, the code that is written in the file uh, is, uh, when it is encountered, compiled before it being executed. Every uh, Of course, the next time the program mean, uh, meets uh, a function that has already been computed, the compilation time doesn't need to be paid twice. It solves what uh, is called in computing as a two-language problem. That's in, uh, in many languages, that was the case in DynaMatLab. Computer, uh, uh, computation intensive code for MATLAB was in fact re rewritten in C, C++ or Fortran to, get, uh, to uh, take the form of MEX file, which were then used by MATLAB. It's the same thing for Python. If you go deep into uh, compute, uh, computational routine in Python, uh, it has been developed in C. Uh, R, all the heavy lifting of R is done by code written uh, in C. Julia offers the po possibility of uh, offers a style of programming, which of course takes time and so on, to produce uh, very well optimized code. But the advantage of it, it is only a matter of changing your your uh, programming style when you need. Uh, when you need the power of optimized code, but you stay in the same environment, in the same tool, in the same language. Uh, it has a neat uh, uh, programming concept like user defined types. It's not a class oriented uh, language. It has this interesting thing, which is called multiple dispatch, that for a given function, Julia is going to build as many different methods, version of this function, depending on the types of the argument that is uh, closed. So it's possible to write both general code that can be used with many different types or very special uh, code that is heavily optimized for a particular uh, for, for particular uh, types. As I already mentioned, there is a rich collection of existing packages. There is a lively community. So it's, uh, it's, very, enfin, it's very easy to get answer to problem uh, the, the developer can encounter on, on the chats of the, uh, of the Julia ecosystem. It has a very efficient package ma ma management that is, uh, that deals very efficiently with different, uh, different version of the packages. And, uh, as far as Linear is concerned, once you are into Julia's, if you open the package, the packaging, the package manager 
interface, it uh, installing Julia, all its dependency packages, including a particular uh, uh, packaging of the preprocessor, simply by typing add Dyna. And finally, uh, Julia has a powerful metaprogramming ability, meaning uh, you have instruction to write repetitive statements that you may have in your uh, Julia program. So that may, that's an additional thing that makes for ev efficient programming in Julia. So uh, we are, of course, far uh, from the end of this rewriting uh, project. What is currently available uh, in Dynar Julia? So I listed the Dynar uh, command uh, in alphabetical order. So uh, you can do smooth, you can compute the smoother of a calibrated model. Uh, you can uh, enrich your models with deterministic trends, as in MATLAB. Uh, the initialization of the si simulation is contra uh, has his val and for the guess value in it valve. We have perfect foresight, but not all the options. We have perfect foresight with occasionally binding constraints, the uh, mixed complementarity uh, models. It's missing an end here. And it's easy of a, by default, we use PATH, a very efficient mixed complementarity solver that was developed for the uh, general equilibrium software GAMS. Uh, you, you can do Ramsey, uh, uh, Ramsey policy, optimal policy under commitment with planner objective and Ramsey model command. You, for, you can define the shock for the, your si simulation. You can compute the steady state and you can compute and get, get the impulse response function of uh, a stochastic model of, for the time being, only at order one. So you get linear approximation of, of your stochastic model. Doing that, we develop uh, occasionally new features. Uh, uh, for steady, we were, it's not completely working yet, but we want uh, to facilitate solving uh, the steady state of a model when you know part of the solution. Huh? Uh, in Dynam, uh, so, by, uh, uh, so it's something we're working on. And we also, it's, it's pretty much linked, we also change the algorithm uh, used for, um, uh, for computing the steady state of a Ramsey uh, model by using a new, uh, by using uh, optimization algorithm, rather than, uh, of, you know, we change the way we, there was always an optimization algorithm. We change the way of, uh, we are using it. And uh, the future will tell if, uh, if we succeeded in, get, in getting a more efficient way of solving uh, for uh, the steady state of under Ramsey policy. We had a new opportunity. We, of course, uh, encounter also two challenges. I will uh, cite two of them. So because of the intensive use of just-in-time compilation, Julia has a problem of time to, uh, to first result. In the discussion, it was first called ca uh, time to first graph because that's what people was observing more. So it's that there is uh, of the of the order of one minute uh, of a thirty second, one minute, maybe one minute and a half time when you start Julia until you get in Dynar your first result. After once this time is spent, that's the initial uh, compilation. Uh, 
then the computation is is very fast. So I, uh, later in the presentation, I will tell you what we're working on to uh, diminish the time to first result. Then uh, another uh, issue has to do with uh, something where MATLAB was uh, probably making our life too easy for our own good. Uh, in macro modeling, we use at least two expressions which do not are not valid for uh, negative numbers. Uh, it is, of course, uh, you, cannot, you cannot compute in real numbers the log of x, and you cannot compute the power, the fractional power of a negative number. What MATLAB is doing is such circumstances is silently switches to complex computation, but Julia reports an error. Of course, switching silently to complex uh, computation multiplied by, uh, by two, the difficulty of the computation and slow down the, uh, the computation. Computing in the real, uh, in the complex uh, number rather than uh, computing in real number. And, and of course, we are only what we do for most of the time, ex except for the eigenvalue. We don't want, we don't have complex solution or, uh, or things of the same. The, the problem can be circumvented by uh, using auxiliary variable, the, in fact, the log of x, and using the auxiliary expression, saying that x is equal to the exponential of Lx. Of course, uh, that guarantees that x will always have a positive value. And then every time in your model you have Lx, you substitute, uh, you have log of x, you substitute by Lx. And when you have x at the power of a, with the risk that, for example, in the process of computing the steady state or of, co of computing a perfect uh, foresight simulation, when you're running the Newton algorithm, then and so there is a risk that even if the solution of X is positive, Newton wants to take a shortcut through negative numbers, and then in Julia you will fail. The, um, then you replace X at the power of A by X of LX at the power of A. Of again, X of LX, you're guaranteed that it will always be positive. Ultimately, we will, we will ask the preprocessor to do it uh, automatically. But uh, before that is done in the, uh, in the coming months, if you encounter the problem, you have to do the substitution by hand in your model. Okay. So as I told you, we, uh, we, do, uh, we develop uh, the code, or, or we order, or organize the code in different Julia uh, packages. Uh, I, I just will uh, cite them uh, quickly and, uh, and then go back uh, more, uh, more in detail on, on some of them. Uh, Axis arrays table is a new package to deal with table of time series. It is meant to replace time data fra frames that we're uh, using now. It's just lighter and, and, uh, and faster. DynarJL is the main package that calls in turn all the other one. Extended dates, uh, which has been recently completely uh, refurbished, so we are at the second version of uh, extended dates. It's a, a package to, de to deal with dates, the way economists or statisticians think of dates. 
that uh, in programming language, for example, a semester is a duration, but it's not uh, a tick on the timeline. Okay. So, in fact, what in statistics or economics we are used to do, we have different units of time and we measure the, the passing time in different units. But the software often do not support this view. It only sees the time as second or uh, end days. So uh, extended dates let you define different time period and history uh, in years, semester, quarter, months, week, uh, and dates. And also, because for example, uh, in Dynar, when you do impulse response function on a theoretical model, you don't have historical time in, in mind. Your uh, impulse response function are computed on the next periods, but the periods remain abstract. abstract. We have also uh, 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 an undated frequency to represent abstract uh, time. It's important in particular for the reporting tables and the graphs. And uh, for all those different types of dates, we use always the sa same system to, uh, to, uh, to count them with integer since the uh, since the first of January of 1970. Fast pack interface is a way of accelerating and saving uh, on memory allocation of basic uh, linear operation. Generalized Sylvester solver uh, will be used for higher order approximation. Kalman filter tools contains all the code we have developed. Uh, around the Kalman filter. Kronecker tools uh, much linked with uh, generalized Sylvester solver uh, handles uh, basic Kronecker operation that occurs again when we deal with higher order uh, approximation. Uh, the linear solving a linear rational expectation is a well-defined mathematical problem that exist completely independently of Dynar, and we solve it in, uh, in linear rational expectation. Uh, at the core of solving a linear rational expectation, we need to, to solve a special matrix equation, and the solutions to solve it is, um, is developed in polynomial matrix equation. Uh, in fact, the name is not perfect, uh, correspond exactly to what we are doing. I will, I will comment on it a little bit later. Uh, uh, in some of the algorithms of uh, polynomial uh, matrix equation, we use true uh, decomposition that generate quasi upper triangular matrices, and we have a package to deal with. Uh, uh, a uh, time data frame was the first package we developed to deal with table of time series. Okay, so that's the general map of the various packages you will uh, see if on GitHub you go to uh, the Dynar Julia organization. So if we look a little bit more uh, deeply into Dynar. So Dynar JL deals with the Dynar uh, instruction. It calls the preprocessor that is the same as for Dynar MATLAB Octa. Uh, we, for so, for uh, those uh, of you who are familiar with the inside of Dynar MATLAB, the state of the computation that in Dynar MATLAB was, was collected in O underscore, M underscore, and option underscore is in a sing, now kept in a single structure that we call context, will contain the symbol table, all the, all, uh, the symbol you introduce in Dynar, the endogenous, exogenous, 
variable, the parameters. The models contains all the, uh, all the details belonging uh, to your models. In fact, in most mode, mode uh, until now, the mode file have a single model, but in preparation for uh, heterogeneous agent model, we build the possibility that there is not in a mode file or at, at a given time in a Dynar computation, there is not a single model, but possibly several models. To some extent, we had already that in Dynar MATLAB when we do block decomposition. Uh, Dynar Julia doesn't do yet block decomposition. Model file info is another structure that collects information at what you did in the mode file. All the results are collected in an object that is called results. And for intermediary results that you compute once but may reuse uh, in, in another uh, part, or uh, intermediary stuff that is not really a final result we put in the work structure. The uh, the pre so the preprocessor doesn't uh, accept for the model, the function representing the model does not write a Julia file, a JL file, but the instruction and definition contained in the mode file are uh, collected in a JSON file, which is at this location and written di directly by the C++ processor. So that's facilit reading uh the mode file json facilitate uh, the main loop of the execution of dynar uh, often it's easier to start developing the code the numerical code inside dynar jl even if at the end we should exporting in package of their own. So, for example, the code for perfect foresight is in Dynar JL, but at some point it should be put in uh, something like a discrete two boundary value problem uh, package. We use NL solve for perfect foresight simulation. We had to tweak it a little bit. Uh, there is some implementation where we deal automatically with domain violation. But again, if you if the problem shows up, uh, then you should think about what I indicated before. We use a path solver for uh, occasionally binding constraint model. Uh, we have the possibility, as, uh, as before, we have the possibility to execute arbitrary Julia native instruction written in a mode file with one limitation. We now interpret only one liner of Julia code. So for example, the definition of a loop, which would start with the four of Julia and finish several lines below with the end, uh, Dynar Julia is not yet able to deal with those constructs. Uh, uh, all the results are stored as time series. That uh, in Dynar MATLAB, uh, we started only with abstract vector to store the result. And after a while in the history of Dynar, we developed, Stefan developed D series. And, and yet to this day, the D series are not used everywhere they could be in uh, Dynar MATLAB. Here, uh, we change a bit the perspective. That means that all the results are time series, maybe undated time series, but time series, and they are stored uh, as such. It is, it's only at the core of the numerical algorithm, basically when you call one of the packages that I said before, uh, listed before, that for, just for the purpose of the comp computation, you are going to transform your time series in vector of matrices depending on the context. 
And as uh, as I mentioned, with the uh, time to first resolve problem, uh, we have to 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 optimize the pre-compilation of this package to improve time to first results. Okay. Uh, as you may have guessed, when I described to you the way we were so storing the results, because uh, presumably before result, there will be other branching for result from stock simul, result from perfect foresight simulation, uh, and so on and so forth. So we started developing access ass assessor function the, that is going to going to find the result uh, directly in the depth of context results. So uh, we do that. It exists currently for the result of perfect foresight simulation and for the impulse response function. So simulation, the function simulation uh, returns a vector of simulation result because you may have several simulation in the same mode file. Simulation one will return the result of the first simulation in a da da data frame, so a collection of time series. Simulation colon y will return the simulated trajectory for variable y. Simulation double parenthesis colon y colon x returns a time data frame a table with the simulated trajectory for variable y and variable x. IRF is, uh, for the IRF is a little bit different. IRF is a dictionary, so it has keys and it has one key for each exogenous variable because we, comp uh, we compute the impulse response function always for a shock to one particular uh, to, to a, a shock to one particular exogenous variable. IRF's uh, colon uh, SE, a colon E will return all the IR impulse response function of the different endogenous variable for a, sh uh, a shock on variable E. And finally, IRFS dot uh, colon E colon Y will return the one impulse response uh, response of variable Y to a shock to exogenous variable E. So during the development, I guess it's a good thing to already think how we can facilitate the life of the user. Uh, and if we have a rather complex storage system for, uh, for the result, provide uh, short, easy shortcuts to get, to get to that. So that's for the general, uh, the main Dynar packages. Now, as an example of a package that solve uh, a well-defined mathematical problem, so completely independently of Dynar, solving a linear rational expectation models comes down to solve this equation where you will have one matrix that multiply yt plus one plus current uh, current variable plus a uh, matrix multiplying the lags, uh, plus a vector of exogenous shock and maybe a constant to the equation. And it is this equation and the expectation of this equation must be equal to zero. Uh, the, expect the conditional expectation is necessary because ut is uh, are supposed to be stochastic. Ut plus one, ut are known at period t, but of course ut plus one is hidden before uh, behind yt plus one. Therefore, from the point of view of conditional expectation, yt plus one is random. For this equation. We define the steady state as what solves this equation. Then we know, being in a linear world or a linear world, that the solution will take the form 
of uh, one uh, first order uh, Taylor expansion, you will have the, the gap to the steady state for yt is equal to one unknown matrix gy, the gap to the steady state of yt minus one, plus the effect of the shock. To find uh, gy and gu, you need in turn to solve the following unilateral quadratic matrix equations. Th 30 years later, I finally learned the right mathematical term to define uh, this equation. That's where the, the, the confusion of dynamic matrix equation comes from. The right name for the algorithm is unilateral quadratic matrix, matrix equation. So, uh, because the difficulty here is you do, here it's linear, but here you have a, a, a quadratic form in your unknown matrix GY. That's why we need special method to solve that. Once we know GY, of course, GU is uh, easily computed. So uh, a linear rational expectation do that. And in plus, it provides function to reduce the size of the problem because the static variable, meaning the variables that do not appear with leads and lags in a model, uh, can be eliminated. Oh. And now we have two ways of solving the unilateral quadratic matrix equation. We provide two uh, algorithms, the, ge the generalized Schur decomposition, which is uh, advocated by Klein and Sims since the late 90s, and a more recent algorithm, cyclic reduction, that has been developed by uh, Italian mathematicians. So that's in uh, what's the wrongly named polynomial matrix equation. That will be changed later. Uh, in the Kalman filter tool package, we have uh, several flavors of Kalman filter and, um, and the diffuse uh, filter in smooth. Uh, recently, I realized there was problem in the univariate, uh, the univariate diffuse filter. So currently, the Kalman code doesn't work with uh, uh, with non-stationary model, but it should be fixed uh, shortly. Uh, Kronecorp tools uh, solves a bunch of uh, quadrati of uh, Kronecker expressions. The trick is never to form the the Kronecker product, but always work on little part of it that follows algorithm developed by Andra Kamenik when he developed the Dynar plus plus. Uh, then the, those techniques are used for solving the generalized Sylvester equation that we encounter in higher order uh, approximation. So I, I already uh, talked the length of time data frame ex extended dates. So uh, I pass uh, fast lap lapack interface. Uh, is uh, uh, is very low level deal with very low level uh, computation. Its main contribution is to pre-allocate the workspace rather than allocate workspace every time you call the function, as it was uh, as it is by default uh, currently in Julia. And that uh, that package uh, is the one that is the most achieved. And it is already used uh, directly by one or two and indirectly by 223 other packages in Julia uh, ecosystem. So there are effort benefited other, uh, uh, other uh, Julia user independently from Dyna. If we look a little bit at what we achieve with uh, Julia uh, today, is including uh, already uh, first element of future code for estimation, we see 
that we can, uh, for a small new Keynesian model with six equation, we can compute the log posterior almost 10 times faster than in MATLAB. Okay. Uh, we, uh, it's not, e it's not very easy to compare what's going on in Julia and MATLAB. Uh, so you, you should take those comparisons with some uh, suspicion, but Julia, for, for log posterior, Julia is faster than MATLAB. To compute the posterior mode on the, uh, on the, uh, opposite, it's slower. And that probably comes that uh, from the fact that the, the code for we use for optimization is probably too complex in Julia for the task, and there is a margin for improvement by the choice of the optimizer. There, if we uh, if we run. Uh, the code uh, 10, uh, 10,000 times like in uh, Metropolis Hasting chain, we got uh, four seconds in Julia against 24 uh, in MATLAB. Uh, then uh, another thing is now to, to explore uh, the effect of size. We take an international RBC model with nine equations that we already used as a test case in, uh, in the path, past. And uh, you see that, in fact, the advantage of Julia with respect to MATLAB increases with the size of the model. Uh, here, we, uh, we solve a problem with 900 equations. And uh, Julia uh, has a clear advantage. In recent, uh, our recent effort have been uh, to adapt to uh, uh, a change we uh, requested in the preprocessor. That's until now we were using uh, dense Jacobian matrix and sparse higher order derivatives. The main reason that we started by using the first order derivative uh, to solve the linear model with generalized sure algorithm. And there is no generalized sure algorithm for, um, uh, for sparse matrix. So we were forced to use it dense anyway. But then thinking about it, we say that the balance of advantage is rather than generally work with Jacobian matrices, with a sparse Jacobian matrices, even at first order, and uh, you build dense matrices only for those algorithms where uh, we need it. We get a, a, a great contribution of our, it was by putting some effort, it was not easy, but by putting for, for my effort, we get a very, uh, a very efficient implementation of the computation of the large Jacobian of the stack system used in perfect foresight when we feed it directly a sparse representation of the derivative period by, by period. And of course, uh, if you, it is faster to build a dense matrix out of a sparse matrix that to build the sparse matrix uh, out of a dense matrix. So that's what we do for the general algorithm. And we can exploit sparsity um, uh, in the, the cyclic reduction algorithm. Uh, we had one uh, uh, one unexpected uh, difficulty. When we do occasionally binding constraint with Ramsey policy model, we need, for a reason I will not go into, to reorder the equation of the model. And it turned out that reordering a sparse Jacobian was something more complicated than I expected, but it's working now. 
So that uh, uh, and uh, we uh, it's we we haven't really measured, but it's probably on the order of ten times the the operation which di depends directly of sparse derivative is in the order of ten times uh, faster for a perfect foresight. Let me talk. Uh, uh a little bit about uh time to first uh result so currently well, the first time in a session we call dinar you have to wait about one minute for the first result uh one minute doesn't uh, seems long in a day but when you are in front of your computer waiting one minute you find it very long uh, so basically, we have two things we can do. We can either, uh, we can, uh, and we are going to do both. We have to add instruction to pre-compile packages so that the, the time is spent once for all at the moment of installing the package rather uh, than every time you uh, call the pack a new pack the package at the beginning of a Julia session. And uh, then there is another option, basically make a special Julia system image with Dynar in it. But that has been done by the user. It's a bit difficult to standardize it. We could probably do it for Windows and put them so somewhere. But And then the difficulty is in the current state of Dynar, it, you need a machine with 16 gigabytes of RAM and basically no other application running during the time you are making the system image, which will take you 10 or 15 minutes. We haven't given the instruction to do it yet. Uh, we are going to do and we'll see uh, how we can pursue from there uh, with feedback of uh, real users. Okay. Uh, we have been requ we had requests to explore the possibility to speed up the computation of large models and to reduce the their memory uh, footprint. Uh, what was uh, offered to us as a challenge uh, is a large multi-region model with I, uh, the small version has 10 symmetric region, medium 20, and the larger 30 symmetric region. So in the large uh, form, uh, e, we have 6,500 6, equations and we want to simulate it over uh, 600 periods. The bottleneck is in, so perfect for sight, we use the Newton algorithm. At the core of the Newton algorithm, in every iteration, you need to solve a, a linear system and the linear system has the dimension of, uh, of the model. So in the extreme case, we had 6,000 times 600 equation system, which goes into the million uh, sparse matrix to solve the, the system. So there is, we know uh, three technologies basically, uh, the default one in Julia, in MATLAB also, for sparse matrix to use OOMFPAC and uh, sparse uh, LU decomposition. Then there is uh, a new alternative that use parallelization, which is called Pardizo Solver. And there is also iterative, which is also uh, LU decomposition. Uh, and there is the iterative method, Krilov method, but they require good preconditioner. And to this day, we uh, haven't found a way to compute a preconditioner fast enough to make this approach uh, uh, interesting. So to tell you uh, the uh, the final result of where we are at, that you see that even for the small model with 1700 equation, you have a system for with one more uh, million unknown. And uh, 
in OMSPAC, you need uh, nine gigabytes of memory and it takes 51 seconds for one iteration of the Newton procedure. With Pardiso, we need only 150 megabytes, not gigabyte, megabyte, and it takes only uh, 15 seconds. So uh, it drastically diminish the, the memory need for the, uh, for the linear problem, which was the previous uh, bottleneck. Essentially, if I'm working on a 16 gigabyte machine, so the only model I could play with before was the, sm the small model. Now, with Pardiso, we cannot do, we can still not do all 600 periods. We could, we could do 300 periods for 20 countries and 100 periods for the 30 country. So solving now not only one iteration, but the entire nonlinear problem for the 1 million equation take five minutes, for the 20 countries, 16 minutes, and for the 30 countries, um, uh, 30 minutes. It looks big, but for such a large problem, it's already an attractive result. And in fact, if you compare the time, the time and resources it takes for one iteration and, uh, and the time that appears at the end of the nonlinear solver, seems there is a margin of improvement inside the working of the nonlinear solver outside of solving uh, the linear steps. So th uh, that's something we are going to keep. Uh, working on. Okay, so uh, that's basically the main things we did the, uh, before uh, for improving the prototypes that we had. What we have our, on our to-do list is uh, do uh, the estimation uh, code which is almost which is uh, almost ready but not uh, not quite address the problems of the time to the first result develop tools for uh, forecasting compute analytical derivative of the log likelihood to be able to use better more efficient estimation methods uh, finish making pro uh, making the existing package production grades having tests, documentation, benchmarking, and collecting those uh, advanced on the Dynard Julia documentation itself, do the K-order approximation, start exploring the heterogeneous agents model, uh, linear model with occasionally binding constraints, things like Ogbin, nonlinear estimation, Markov switching the SGE, global sensitivity analysis, and a global method of approximation. By then, we must be in 2025 or 2026. Thank you very much for your attention.